Okay, guys. There might be some people who ask. Let me get that. Let me get that. <sighs> Shit, man. I made a mistake. Yo. There might be some people who ask. When will Fat Joe give the rap game up? My last album, I said I retired. I made a retirement tour. And to only find out that I put out Sunshine the Light went number five in America. Now, whenever I see my brother, the champ, greatest of all time, Floyd Mayweather, announce he has a new fight, scares the fuck out of me. Don't know why. Scares the fuck out of me. And so he's not going to fight Jake Paul. He's fighting Logan Paul. Jake Paul has proven to be a knockout artist. One tough cookie. Logan Paul, I don't know his stats. But in any case, the champ needs to stop fucking around. I'm telling you guys... I love the champ. I don't love the champ. I worship the champ. I know every time he fights, it's the big, big, big bag. But it's just scary, man. I don't want nothing to happen to the champ. I don't. Yeah, look, I go for Floyd Mayweather over everybody. But I'm just saying, like, you know that ball of a time? I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? I know this guy might not be the one, but I mean like, yo, we got to stop. This is a fake fight. We going to watch it, though. And pay for it. We going to watch it and pay for that shit. Yeah, I know his shit. Okay, no. from <laughs> Woo. yo uh, what's up man the big homie yo hey yo hey yo hope it's four fifth man um welcome to the show Thank, thanks for having me i appreciate it i'm honored bro. man we've been watching you and you've been talking all this consciousness Slash, cause, cause you got conspiracy shit. You conspiracy, you you with the conspiracy shit too. That's that, that's a fact. I mean, you know, <laughs> the Bronx Borough president said hocus. Shout out Ruben Diaz. <laughs> oh, Ruben Diaz in the field. What up, Ruben? Yeah. Brother, he said what's up. So hocus, um, being that you know you were so tight with DMX, tell me about your relationship with DMX and how did you become so cool with DMX. You know, it's a crazy story because, um, you know, shout out to my brother Gilly. Um, you know Gilly, Gilly, I used to be Terror Squad. That was with y'all, actually. He was, um, you know, he was road managing DMX. And um, he used to have my song, I'm from Castle, I'm from Soundview, on his ringtone. And like, he never even played it for X, but when it would come on, X would be like, yo, that song is fire, yo, like, who is that? Gilly gave him the rundown, you know, who I was and whatever. He was like, yo, call him. So one day Gilly called me like, yo, hold on, somebody wanna talk to you. And then I and I grabbed the phone, it's DMX. I'm like, okay. The DMX is like, yo, dog, I love this song. Save a spot for me on the remix. I'm like, oh shit, DMX wanna get on my hell yeah. He was like, yo, when you shooting the video? And I was like, yo, I'll shoot the video next week. And uh, long story short, when I went to shoot the video, I told everybody to be out there at, at um 12 o'clock. It was in my hood, it's in Castle Hill. And I'm, I stopped at my mom's crib in Castle Hill, take a shower, and it's like 9 in the morning. I get a phone call. It's like, yo, dog, it's DMX. I'm out here. I'm on your block. I'm like, DMX, what are you doing in Castle Hill Project by yourself, 9 o'clock in the morning? I had to rush downstairs like, hold on, it's the hood. But, you know, the hood loves DMX, though. You know what I'm saying? And ever since then, we've been, we've been like brothers, you know? You know, DMX, man, they, he don't do that for people. He got a really, really, really... uh feel you like that. You know what I'm saying? People saying they're not hearing you uh, clearly. 
Are you hearing me clearly, or you are you not hearing Hocus clearly? Tell me. Yeah, I see it. It, it sounds kind of like muffled on my phone too. I don't know why. I don't know, but let's let's work through it. You know All what I'm right. saying? Because I was I was I was pick, 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 trying to pick you, and I got a dude from Kazakhstan to come on this motherfucker. The guy ain't want to get the fuck off. I, I see him. I see him. And so DMX, may he rest in peace, man. I know you was really, really tight with him. And, and you know, the man, he don't fuck with nobody unless he fuck with you. Um, right. You started out, let me ask you something. You still, is it, uh, and I don't, um, you started out in the gang life, right? Right. Break that down to me. Uh, there's a lot of young brothers here watching. What made you, uh, go towards being in the gang and, and 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 wanting to join the gang and being down with the gang. What 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 attracted to you to that lifestyle? Well you know it's it's a lot of factors that play in that. Um one is that you know I got a big family. I got seven brothers, three sisters, you know what I'm saying? My father died when I was young. He died when I was 12 years old. So he left behind a lot of men. You know what I'm saying? So my brothers, my cousins hit the street. My brothers hit the street. Naturally, I hit the street. Gangs wasn't really around. Like, it was around, but not really heavy yet. But um, it was one gang that stuck out to me. It was Sex Money Murder. You know what I mean? Because it was like, it was from my neighborhood. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, it became blood later on. But I watched these men who started Sex Money Murder. And, you know, as a, as a youth, like the youth do now, I idolized it. I idolized the money. You know, the cars. They was getting a lot of money. They was getting a lot of money. Pistol Pete and them was getting a whole ton of money um, before even joining the gang. You know, and the, and the way I looked at it is like, I always been a get money dude. I never been in a gang. So it, 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 it kind of bugged me out when I seen somebody like a Pistol Pete who was a get money dude that was getting crazy money, join a gang or, or affiliate with a gang. Um, I'm trying to figure out what's what, um, what would make a kid say, I'm going to join this gang, whether it may be a Latin king, a blood, a crip. Why would they want to join a gang? But I think I think we're in search of brotherhood. We're looking for some type of something to hold on to, something to connect to that we don't have, something that, that we're missing, you know, some some type of love. Um, some some people do it for protection, you know. But I think mostly it's like, and especially when you're already brothers with these people, it, it's more like a. To me, like in my hood, it was more like a brotherhood. Like I already mm -hmm. fuck with them, you know what I mean? The OGs respected me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I I like what they was doing back then. I wanted to be a part of it, and you know, I became a part of it. So I, I think that's what makes people more so lean towards the gang, you know, like it. One thing I do want to say is, um, I know you probably get this later on. It's not illegal to be in a gang. It's just illegal when you start to do illegal shit. You know what I mean? Because even you know, I, I went to trial for this shit, so I know. You know what I'm saying? So like gangs, it, I, it's not a bad thing, but the perception of the of the media and what these little dudes is doing now, especially with the drill rap, is making it look bad. You know what I mean? Like it, if it was organized and it was a little, it would be a little better, but. It just got such a bad stigma on it that I wouldn't advise anybody to join a gang right now. But if you are in the gang, try to change the direction of the mental within the gang because they indict you. Is the there, is there positivity in the gang? Because all we see from gangs is, you know, negative, violence. Is there positive brothers in gangs trying to help brothers or, or something like that? Well, I mean, I, I would consider myself a positive brother in the gang. I'm not active. Like I once was, um, but you know I'm still affiliated. And if you if if you out there, you watch what I do, you watch what I preach, you watch how I live. Mm -hmm. After what I've been through, you'll be very surprised. And a lot of people, a lot of people think I'm like, like it's a facade. Like what I do now is like that's not really hope. Nah, they waiting for the old hope to come out the shell. Like. Nah, I really changed, bro. I was facing life in prison, bro. Like, that's a life changer. That's different. I mean, it's different from being locked up and you know when you're coming home than being locked up in jail for four years and you don't know. And you got to go to trial. I, I went to trial and I beat them. You know what I'm saying? So that's a different animal right there. 
And, and so, and so, what you're saying is, and, and 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 you know, when people talk, I try to get people to feel things, right? And you was locked up with Percy. Y'all both was fighting in cases, and you know, I try to ask Percy, like, yeah, what was it like the day before you went to trial, and you was facing life, and 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 do you get on your knees and pray to God for four or five hours? Do you? What what what's it like when you when you when you getting ready to go to trial for something like this? It's funny, yo. Shout out to my bro, Purse. I was me and Purse actually in the same house. That's crazy. While I was fighting this, um, you you definitely pray and you start to really analyze your life. You start to look at everything that you was doing, and you start to see the people that you really hurt and why you was doing that, which is your family, because the only people that's gonna be there for you, and you really start to look at it and be like, yo, was it worth it? And if you ask yourself that question, nine times out of 10, the answer is no. And now, and I had to really sit there and be like, hold on. I came in here with the mindset that I could, I, I really told myself this, I could die any day. And I was ready to die any day. But now I can't, and I was like, you know what? I, I got to change, I want to live. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I switched up my whole life. I became vegan. You know, I just like I want to I want to I want to be a different example for my kids. You know what I mean? You start to think about stuff like that, Joe. You really start. If if, if not, there's something wrong with you. I don't. Know. If not, something wrong with you. If you get a chance, and you fuck up again and fuck up again, and um and uh, I remember I used to see you on the visits when I used to go see Percy. Um, you know when 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 he was fighting the case, man, and uh. And it's crazy because you might have had a misconception of me before be, before you met me or you ever seen me. Um, huh? and, nah. and they saying they can't hear me too good. You hear me I good? think if you cut off the Wi-Fi, I can hear you clearly. Oh, uh, you hear me clearly? I hear you clearly. I just seen no. I just seen Nori put that he can't hear me too good. All, All right, right, so maybe it's just, do you have your Wi-Fi on? Maybe you gotta I shut just, it off. I just took. I took it off. I took yeah, it that's off. a trick they taught me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. I took so, it off. but yeah, what so you were saying, I see Joe? You, I see you on the visit while I'm going to see Purse, and Purse is like, "Yo, he fighting the case. I'm fighting the case," and um. It's just so important that we support our brothers while they locked down, while they going through their shit. And unfortunately in the hood, you know, everybody act like they your brother and when you driving through the hood, they love you. But when you get locked up, they don't really come through to visit you or support in any way. Um, and so, um, uh, was that the case for you? Was, was your people coming through to visit you or was more like your family only? It was it was more so my family, and um some of my niggas was definitely pulling up, you know. But um, mm -hmm. what you said stuck out a lot to me because, you know, I know you probably gonna go into this, but I I'm, I'll probably just segue into it. You know, when we did Bang Bang Boogie, you mm -hmm. know, back then we made we did make a diss track dissing you, you know what I'm saying? And like you said, the perception, you know, I was you know the younger hope was just a rider, like you know what I mean? I'm like yo, I was mm -hmm. just like, all right, whatever. You know what I'm saying, but but mm -hmm. when I when I got locked up and I and I seen that, and I'm with Percy, and you coming to see him, I'm like, hold on, certain certain individuals ain't coming to check me. I'm like, wait a minute, that's real nigga shit. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'm facing the rest of my life, bro. When when I when, when we you know like I said we was in my, like shout out to my brother Gilly. We was in Gilly house. Gilly cut his finger. We all put our hand like yo, we in this bang bang book. I thought you know I'm this brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Brotherhood means you're there for somebody, whether they thick and thin. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to throw nobody under the bus. I got love. I love everybody. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I did. Look, I started to look at a whole lot of things different ways when I was in there. A whole lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm okay. saying? And I, so, I do want to say to you, like you, you really, you know what I mean? Like my salute and told my hat to you. You didn't deserve that back in the day. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's hip hop is a competitive sport. You know what I'm saying? So we could take it that way too. But it was a little more personal, I know, too, because of Cuban or whatever. But you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, you really ain't deserve that. So I took my hat to you and salute to you. Yeah, you know it's all saying? love, man. It's all love. It's a, it's a whole lot of misconceptions out there. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 you got to just, you know, it's life. It, it's a journey that uh, that we got to take, like, such as yourself. 
And I believe in redemption. I believe in change. I'm a true testament that you can change. You know, so when you tell me, uh, they always say everybody could change or whatever, but it seems like, it seems like when you change, they don't believe that you could change, even though you really can change. You know, and, and that's what we got to tell everybody. I'll tell you a funny story happened to me, right? And this is no disrespect to anybody in the gang or whatever the case may be. But one time, one of the big boys sat me down and said, yo, Joe, uh, we want you to join a gang, right? I was already fat, Joe. Big Pun was already big pun. In fact, Pun was with me when I met with him. He said, all the guys look up to you this and this and that. And I said, well, if I join the gang, what is there for me? Like, who's the principal? Who owns businesses? Who's the guy I got to look up to? And he said, well, that's easy. Such and such is doing triple life. And I said, so that's this is the big guy? Yeah, he's doing triple life. Well, who's the guy? No, that's such and such. He's doing life in, in 45 years. And then, so I'm telling this guy, I say, yo, man, I'm a successful rapper. Like, we run a bit, like why would I want to go to jail for triple life? Like, why would, and, and so, obviously, I didn't join that gang or nothing like that. But um, the reason what you, why you do what you do is so important is because you live the life. And it's certified that you live that life. And there's kids out there confused or whatever who might feel like they like to hear you or get some guidance from you uh, to just walk in a positive way. Would you tell the old hocus, yo, don't join the gang? You, you know, um, you can hear me clear? Yeah. All right. You know, um, I, I, I'm the type that I don't like to, I don't like to say, I don't live in regret. You know what I'm saying? So, I I look at it like this. I probably I, I probably wouldn't tell old hocus don't join the gang. I would tell Ho old hocus to be a little more wiser. And if you do love these brothers, try to direct them in a different light. But at the same time, I appreciate everything that I went through, Joe. Because who I wouldn't be this person talking to you if I didn't face those obstacles, Joe. I wouldn't like you know. And, and I'm so I'm so grateful and thankful that I got locked up when I did. Even if Joe, even if I would have blue child and got 25 to life. I, I would have still been thankful because I learned a lot and yeah, I found myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not just I'm not just faithful. I'm a spiritual being having a human experience, and I understand that we all are gods. You know what I'm saying? We all we all create our own reality here. And once you figure that out, who you really are, and that you create your own reality, that you a god. It's like I can't kill God. Like I'm looking at a god. I I don't, don't want to be for God. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm gonna protect myself from someone who doesn't understand that they're God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I, I don't want I don't want to live that way anymore. You know what I'm saying? And I and I made that change, yo. And I'm like, yo, I'm here to tell anybody that's listening, any youth, any gangbanger, you could do that right now. Yo, sit your bro down. Let's talk to him. Yo, bro, look, bro. We gotta start, like you said, man. How we create some equity now? It's, it's about yo, the world changing. Everybody's online. Everybody's getting indicted, locked up. You ain't getting away with no crime, bro. The game is changing. Sit your mm -hmm. homies down. Let's talk about how we gonna create some equity. How we gonna get this money? Legally, legit, legitly, like you know what I mean. Bring those, like you said. Where's the, where's the where's the judges in the gang? Where's the doctors? Where's the lawyers? Where's those people at? You know the entertainers, as far as like basketball players or even you know, that's the people that you want to align yourself with and to bring around you. And that I think that'll take a lot. You know what, Joe? The, it's, the stigma on the gang is terrible already. So I wouldn't even advise nobody to join the gang. I'm just saying if you're already in it. This is the conversation that needs to be had because, yo, I was watching a video the other day on YouTube. The, the video was called 200 Rappers That Died on, on, on 2020. 200 rappers. Go pull it up. And this is most of them is gun violence. It, yo, it's getting, it's getting too ridiculous. Like, it ain't worth it. But y'all rap about killing. And, yo, like, nowadays, they rap about it on the record, and they really go do it. And then they get on live and talk about it. It's not worth it, bro. Like, it's not. Yo, you don't know until you're sitting in that cell and your homies ain't there. You sitting in that cell by yourself and your girl is out there 
messing around with somebody else because it's going to happen to you. It happens to everybody in jail. Yeah. Everybody. And that, and that feeling right there, and, and then, you, you know, only your mom's coming to see you, your brothers, your close friends, and you really see who appreciates you, you you're going to be like, yo, this wasn't worth it. But at the same time, mm -hmm. I'm that voice within the gang that's, that still love my brothers. And I'm like, look at me. Look what I do. I'm a vegan. They all laugh at me. All my homies laugh at me. Oh, is it eat lettuce? But guess what, Joe? During this pandemic and even before that, when they get sick, yo, Hocus, what do I take? Yo, Hocus, can you help me with this? Yo, Hocus, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I, you know, be a leader, not a follower. Do it I, just, I just told everybody, Hocus, before you, uh, that you said I've never been in a gang. So somebody asked me if I was a Latin king. I've never been in a gang in my life, a day in my life. Okay, that's you heard that from my mouth. Um, uh, being a vegan, it's hard for me, man. I went to the Whole Foods. I bought all the vegan shit you could buy. Uh, I lasted a couple of hours, man. I couldn't do the shit, man. I, I, I couldn't do. How did you do it, though? How did you? Go from hamburgers to like just vegan. I know it's the healthiest thing in the world, <laughs> and you look like a fucking baby. Thanks, I know thanks. it's the healthiest thing I always in the get world. That. <laughs> but how could you do it though? Like how? I, you don't never you, want a steak. Never. I will never eat a steak again if I don't have to. Of course, if somebody asks, if you're on the island by yourself, I'm eating all the rabbits on the island. Okay, yeah. But if I don't have to, for the rest of my life, I would never eat meat. I haven't eaten it in um, nine years now. Well, let me answer your question. How, I, like I said, Joe, it was that, if you remember Bang Bang Boogie, I was overweight. I was, you know what I mean? I was really, really heavy. You know what I'm saying? And um, I went in there with that mind state, like, I want to live, bro. Like, I was, I want to live. I was listening to this program on 99.5 FM while I was locked up. And it was a guy named Mike Anderson. And he wrote a book called The Rave Diet and Lifestyle. And he was talking why people lose weight and gain a whole bunch right back. And he was talking why we, we got from cancer, heart disease, diabetes. And a big, the biggest issue was was um, um processed meats and, and eggs, even eggs. And even stuff that we think is healthy for us. Even grilled, we think we can eat grilled chicken is healthy for us. It's not. It's pumped full of antibiotics and hormones. And even if it's not pumped with that, it's full of calories. You know what I'm saying? Um, So it's like... I had to really sit back and like, hold on. All right. That same day, I, I, um, I ordered the book. I, I called my mom. She bought the book for me. I read that book in one day. That day, I said, I'm not eating meat anymore. In jail. I was like, I'm not. I had a box full of tuna fish. I told I told all the homies, yo, go to the store and buy me some black beans. I traded all my black beans for tuna fish. Everybody thought I was fucking nuts. So tuna fish is part of the, like, no. I thought you could be vegan and eat tuna fish. No. Uh, that's pescatarian. So a vegan doesn't eat any animal animal byproducts or any animal animals at all. So I, it's it's a, it's a light bulb went off for me. Like I don't, you know, what I'm saying, let me try this, and I tried it, and it worked for me. And I I have I haven't felt better in my life. Like you said, I I, I, I equate me to looking this young to being vegan. The way I feel, you know, what I'm saying, I look younger than I did. That was what, 13 years ago now. You know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy. So, like, no, you look great, man. Vegan. And vegan, I know it's the most healthiest shit. It's just hard for me. Maybe I'll try again and and and, and try. You know, I tried one time. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I wasn't you know ready. I tell you, like, I, tell you, I might I tell have you to like, hire a whole chef to cook me vegan good shit for the first month or two. That's what it is. You need a good chef. But just, just even, like I told all my bros, I'm like, yo, Eat this lower your meat consumption instead of eating it three times a day, eat it once. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Add some more leafy green vegetables into your diet. You know what I'm saying? Leafy green vegetables because it retains most of the sun's energy. You know what I mean? That's why the number one source of food is really the sun. You know what I'm saying? So, so let me ask you something, right? I tell them all the time I took the vaccine, I took my whole family to get the vaccine, right? And I know you feel different about the vaccine than me. You do not trust the vaccine at all. Why is that? I don't trust the vaccine for a whole lot of reasons. Um, just to start off, there's been so many children and, and um and, and people that's been injured by vaccines. I mean, Pfizer got the biggest lawsuit ever. If, if, just go Google it. What go Google Google? What's the biggest lawsuit ever in history? It's because of Pfizer. Um, Johnson and Johnson also too. You know they was 
what they baby powder was giving us cancer forever. But it's so many children. I had posted last year, shout out to Baby Carter, man. This kid, the little kid went and got vaccinated, died, right? It just happened. Some of them get autism. The rates of autism don't went from 10,001 to 10 in one. Now it's probably five in one. Um, th that's not only reason why. It's like it, there is an agenda out there, Joe, to. So Bill Gates told us himself, man, I want to depopulate the world and we could do it by, with vaccines. I mean, call me a conspiracy theorist, but those words came out his mouth on TED Talk. You know what I mean? He said that. So I, mm. I, I, just, can't, I just can't trust these people. Um, and, and the fact that they're trying to make it mandatory, like, I don't have, if other people trust it, cool. But I still feel like y'all should be on the side of medical freedom. Meaning that, yo, yo, Joe, they trying to force us to do this, though. Like, I don't want this in my body. You should still mm. be with me. Like, yo, y'all shouldn't be forcing people. Like, if I want to, mm. cool. But I don't want to. It's my Yeah, body. I don't think they should force nobody to do what they don't want to do. And right. so eventually it looks like um, you're going to need the stamp in your passport. Like, yeah, that's what I'm people, saying. That I was over right? here because I've been doing the behind the music, which is probably the biggest look I ever had with my whole family. So I didn't get to go to DMX's funeral. But in the invitation to DMX's funeral, it said, show proof of vaccination. Oh, and that's why I didn't and, go because I, you know, I, I, but I could have still got in back to, you know, Dean Swiss and them spoke them, but I didn't, I, like, it was a deterrent for me. I was like, everybody know I'm not with it. I'm like, I ain't going. You know what I mean? I, I brought my dog from at home. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm mm -hmm. in New York, but, you know, my house there, you know? But, um, yeah, Joe, like, I, I ain't with it, Joe. I, I, I mean, I respect that you did it and, you know, and you, you, you feel like that's what you need to do to protect your family. You yeah, know, yeah. I just don't, yeah, I just don't trust it. Myself and I ain't bashing nobody for going to do it. I just say be on the side of medical freedom. I'm a I'm a freedom fighter, Joe. So when you said earlier, like yesterday, like yo, he activist. I don't like the word activist. I think these activists are frauds. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna call nobody out today. But keep it smooth. Yeah, but you <laughs> but know, you know, you know, KRS always told me that. KRS always said that the activists won't pop off. He said he'd rather take a real dude who talked that shit. <laughs> Get arrested. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he always told me, like, yo, I don't want the power to the people. I want the guys that's a real dude that thinks like me and to pop off with me. Um, so activists ain't the word. Activists ain't the word. I'm more, I, I like to say, call myself a freedom fighter. Uh, advocate, but, you know, activist is an advocate, but, like, a, I'm an advocate because I'm a freedom fighter. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm fighting for our freedoms, like, especially medical freedoms. That's at the top of the list. If you go check, like, I've been posting about vaccination since the day I had an Instagram. Since the day I came home, I made an Instagram because I was studying this information in jail. I was reading a whole lot of books that opened up my mind to a lot of things. So I've been new about this. I've been new of this agenda. I mean, I don't want to go too far deep down the rabbit hole with that. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not an activist, man. Like, and Black Lives Matter, yeah, I, like, if Black Lives really matter, like, Anissa Scott, the, the young girl who got killed last year, who made a, a prayer video that went viral, like, if Black Lives really matter, why are we not marching and going to our own people? Like, look, for real, like, it's time for the regular people to go to the people in the hood. And I'm talking about the gangsters, the gang and everybody. Like, yo, y'all just chill the fuck out or we gonna come at y'all. I guarantee you, if the regular people in the hood go talk to the gangsters like that, the gangsters gonna be like, yo, this is our people. We gotta chill, man. You know, because I used to be that. And then somebody would have came to me like that, my own people, and they really put that type of pressure on me. And I thought I would have been like, damn, son. Because you know what I mean? I, I, I got a conscience, you know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, because, you know, people, you know, they always say, well, you're speaking about some real shit right now, Hocus, right? And so what you're saying is we got the shit in the black community and the Latino community to where uh, we've been oppressed so long that we're supposed to just agree with each other no matter what's going on. Even though we know some shit like might not be right and, and, we, and we still got to be like either shut up or co-sign some shit we don't really, mm. we know it's wrong. In our heart, we really feel it like that ain't right. Like yeah, we so know it's wrong, but you like, oh shit. You know, I'm gonna tell you the last shit I said, right? I said, obviously, um, police been dealing with black and brown people different than they've been dealing with white people. I've watched videos with white dudes chasing them with knives, and the last thing they would do was tase them or shoot them. 
or run over police officers. There was a kid, he tried to take the gun off the cop. And he's out on probation. That exists. It's real, right? right? And so the minute it's a black or Latino, maybe it's out of fear, they come aggressive and they want to pull out the guns, shoot whatever the case may be, right? And so we're against that wholeheartedly. So uh, last week when the young girl was shot, um, the video I saw, she had a knife this long and she was about to cut another black girl. Right. And so they shot her four times. We wish she was still here, right? But what if that cop don't shoot and she cuts the girl's whole neck off? Well, we say then it's okay because it was black on black. I mean, everybody, everybody that talks about this situation, let's be let's be honest. If that was if that was my daughter with the knife, of course I'd be angry. But if that was my daughter on the other end of the knife, of course I'd be angry. So let's not let's not you know I see a lot of people talk about it. In my stance on it, I'm not saying the cops are justified. I'm saying that according to their law, he's going to be justified, right? I'm still mad the girl is dead. I mean, it's a messed up situation. But what about, the, let's go to like, it's like treat, it's like the, the medical industry. They treat symptoms instead of the cause. What's the root cause of this? Why nobody else couldn't stop this before it got that far? You know what I'm saying? Why did, why did, yo, back in the day, we didn't call police for shit like that. We, we smacked, even if it was a woman, you got that night with smack and take ghost stairs. You go say, yo, 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 grab, grab, look, all right, I got it, I got it, hope ain't nothing else. We handled that. We handled that. It didn't have to get mm -hmm. that far. Y'all know police coming to kill. Why y'all called them? Like, it's a, it's a whole lot to talk about other than, oh, you know, the cop is wrong, the cop is wrong, the cop is wrong. I mean, of course, I'm I'm always on the side of our people. Don't get me wrong, but I just got to be real here. We, we gotta just got to be real because then it 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 takes away from our authenticity and uh, defending some people that really uh, need defending. Philando, who got he worked in the school, he got shot up for no reason. Tamar Rice, Eric Gardner, these people were murdered, right? And so. If we just go with everything, then it won't take what we're saying serious. Of course, we wish he would have tasered the girl, but I just think it was in the splare of the moment. That knife was real big, bro. And the girl's like this. Whatever and you, you want, can't tell you she's 15. She don't look 15 years old. She's a big girl. It don't matter. She had a knife about this long in her hand and was going like cocking back. And the girl was like this. So what do you do? You don't shoot, you don't do the and then she kills and then we like, yo, this officer is not like why he did they shoot all the time. Why he ain't shoot this time? The other girl gets killed. So it's a touch and go situation. Um and sometimes we gotta say the real when we talk about, you know, every time in the summer I'm looking at the news, little girl gets killed, shot in the head. At, at a basketball court, people shooting each other. Um, yo, Nori, I hear what you're saying, Nori. They shouldn't have shot her, but what if they didn't shoot her and, and she would have went with that knife and cut that girl's neck off? That's the type of shit I'm talking about, you know? I mean, it's, it's, I, I mean it's, it's, we're not happy. We don't want that to happen in no way, shape, or form. But... She she had a big knife in her hand, man. She did. She a had a big, big knife one. in her hand. And was cocking back. Do we hope she just would have said no and stopped or whatever? I don't know how to do that. Um, But of course they murder people. Like I told you, I gave you some names of who they murdered. Um, Today I seen uh, Benjamin Crump on the news talking about the brother in North Carolina who got shot for it. If you get shot, Four times. I don't give a fuck if it's the cops and shit. You're trying to get out of there. And so he driving off. They shoot him in the back of the head. That was the last shot. That's murder. Yeah, yeah. You, murder. I mean, when when someone is fleeing, I, I, you know, I, they say they ain't supposed to shoot him. Um, yeah, like you said, shot him in the back of the head. That is murder. That definitely is. But you know, that's you murder. Know, lot, you, you're breaking up a little bit, Joe. You there? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay, okay. But you know, a lot of times that's what people always say, like, yo, 
you know, but the cops get away with it when they kill us. That's why we march and we go against them. Our people go through 25 to life. I mean, does that does that make it right? We know that's one battle. The one battle with the cops, but there's still a battle in the hood. So what? If black life supposed to matter, more women die, more black women die in a hospital by doctors having mm. preg by pregnancy. I'm talking about the numbers astronomical. The number is like ten thousand to one. My, black my sister died. My sister died giving giving birth. She went in a coma for eight months. She was giving Nobody birth and then she that. died. Who marched for that, Joe? Who marched? With, her life mattered. It, you know what? It was negligence negligence against the hospital. And it happens way too often for us to be like, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter until freedom. Yeah, well, let's go march over here too then. Because this is the issue too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, well, Black say, Lives, I'm not against the people who, who, who march Black Lives Matter. I'm with that hope. But I'm also saying what you're saying. Um, maybe we need to police ourselves. Maybe we need to talk to each other. You know, Erica Ford, my girl, she's a peace warrior. She goes down there and talks to the gang members, everybody. We just cannot be reckless to where we're shooting at each other. And we know there's some ladies there and there's some little babies there and, um, and might get hurt. Let me tell you some real shit. I got shot, right? I got shot twice. I could have, this is my word on everything. I could have, it was July the 4th. I'm running away. The guy got the gun. He's busting at me, broad daylight. I could have ran through some little kids and got away. I could have ran mm. right there. Dude, these kids were playing hopscotch, whatever. I could have ran right through there and got away. But the second I made the choice to say, nah, them kids going to get hit, I took the longer route, bam, bam, I got hit twice. We still got out of here and I'm here to talk about it. But um, we got to really think about when we pick up these guns in the middle of, you know, a basketball tournament, uh, a barbecue and start shooting people and shooting innocent people. Like, I mean, that's real shit. I mean, we've always been talking about that. Like, yo, we can't just say these people are wrong and, and we're not wrong if we're killing our own people. Right. I, you know, I, I totally agree with that, Joe. And that's why I think that, you know, it, it, I, don't, I don't agree with defund the police. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not with the defund the police. And I, and I know it might sound crazy coming from somebody like me, but we got to be honest. Like, I'm not there to protect my moms all, all day, every day. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not there. No, we need no, police. But what they, what they trying to say, uh, Hocus, is, yo, there's, there's cops that come on the, on the scene too aggressive. Suppose somebody ain't take their medicine. Suppose somebody is going through some bipolar shit. They rather have a division. They mean defund the aggressiveness, but they rather have a division that deals with people who ain't take their medicine or people we can really talk to. That's what they mean. That's I dope. always say I, that. I never really, I never really heard that one. That's dope. That's no, dope. I'm telling you I the truth. I, I just okay. think they worded it wrong. They branded it wrong. They try to shock the world, but it sounds like no more police. Are you fucking crazy? There's bad people out there. You need police, right? No, you but they really, do. what they really was trying to say is have more social workers deal with the situation rather than a cop coming pulling out a gun. That that makes more sense to me. You know, if you know, you can hire people to come do that in the hood. That's like you said, police in our own neighborhood. And you know, I, I it's not that I, I'm just taking shots at Black Lives Matter. It's just that I'm just like, yo, these people matter too. If y'all gonna lead this, let's let's talk about the whole spectrum. You know what I'm saying? Like let's let's create some something for the whole spectrum because every Black life matter, whether it's by police or in the hospital, whether it's of, of a child been vaccinated and died a couple days later, we need to bring some awareness to that because nobody want to talk about it. People have a problem talking about that, you know what I mean? Because it's being highly sensitive, but we need to be like, wait, why are we being highly sensitive by talking about this and it's happening? What, 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 why can't, why do we just have to trust the science? You know what I'm saying? Um, that's just my whole thing when it comes to, when it comes to them. I just think that we need to, you know, have divisions in all of those areas and stand up for all of that as, as, as a whole, black life matters, you know, because every black life matters, every black life period. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I agree. You know, I got the bootleg set up today. 
Cause, I, <laughs> cause yeah, I you usually got the you just got the dope backdrop and all that with the Ciroc yeah, body. You know, I just ran in the studio <laughs> and threw this up. You know, I, I you know, I, I, it's, I've been shooting interviews all day with my family and all that, and so I said, y'all got to get Hocus on, cause you've been talking that shit lately. Um, uh, as far as um, you yourself. How do you plan to elevate your platform and help the people more other than just on IG? Like, what do you think? What What is the dream scenario for you? Right now, I already know. I already know you woke up every day for violence. I did the same shit, bro. I woke up every Hell day yeah. for violence. I woke up to hustle. I was the kid that I don't know how to explain it to people. Like, I was going to get the bag. I don't know how to explain it to you. No <laughs> yeah, matter up, what. Bro didn't care what was going on. I was going to get the bag. And so now, obviously, you worked on your mental and growing up on your wisdom. What's a dream scenario for you? What do you want to do? What's what's your good intentions, your dream come true? Well, my, my, dream, my dream come true is, which, which I am doing, I'm building a community. So, so when I go down the rabbit hole, when I, and I got my rabbit hole light workers, it's not just me just talking you know we do we do talk behind the scenes and we're trying to put things together um i, I want to help me personally I, what i want to do a part of my purpose in life i feel was help people you know see the potential in themselves and stop being so dependent on other people government or whoever and you know you know help them with their health which i do already you know what i'm saying i'm helping people with their health every day people thank me people people call me like i'm a doctor bro. like they call me i got diabetes bro literally today i had a few of them like hope i need help with this and i and i give them my information and it's been helpful you know what i'm saying i'm not a doctor i want to make that disclaimer i'm not a doctor which is why you should trust me more but anyway you know but i, I have knowledge that i feel like i can share with the world and that's that's part of my purpose in life joe is to put these events together and like and like do like um how can I say, like, retreats and resorts and just it's a, a fully spiritual, like, whole cleanse. You know what I'm saying? And to really turn people's minds around and show them, like, you are God. Like, like, you create this reality. Like, even what you're going through right now, you created that. You just got to accept that, understand, like, oh, if I just made this decision. So when I went to jail, I, I looked at every decision I made and be like, yo, if I didn't do this, this I really created this reality for myself. I put myself in. I thought my way in here. I'm going to think my way out. Thoughts is things, man. You know what I'm saying? We create via thought. So I sub what, what goes in the subconscious mind must manifest. It's just a law. It's a universal law. Don't ask me how. That's how God works. You know what I mean? So that's what I've what I always been good at, Joe. Bang Bang Boogie had a lot of negativity to it. But what they don't tell you is I one man solely brought neighborhoods together that was beefing with each other. Dudes that was killing each other. The, every dudes around these projects didn't like each other, so when they when they when they locked us up, niggas started killing each other again. It shows anybody that's on here from the hood can tell you that I'm not lying. I will never speak something so somebody can come out later on and be like, "Yo, he a fraud." No, so I always been good at bringing people together. Now I'm bringing I got a whole community of people I'm bringing together for a better cause, and it's like it's like deposits into my spiritual bank. It make me feel good. You know what I mean? I think that's why a lot of good things. That's why I attracted a dude like DMX into my life. You know what I'm saying? That's why years later, me and you can have this conversation, and you and you, like you said, you you. Yeah, believe it or not, I was the same guy. Like you know, you know, when I grew up, it was real crazy. I was crazy. They was crazy, but I also was the guy that you came to if you wanted to squash it. Like I was the guy. Right. See. Like, Yo, same Joe, thing. <laughs> such and such is gonna kill each other. Can you get in the middle? Can you and I would be the guy who would squash it. I just think good souls are good souls. I think we're a product product of our environment, and we grew up in a place where we weren't allowed to be our true selves. Where you had you was either predator or you was prey. You knew you was not going to be a punk. You was not going to be a sucker. Lay down. Right. So then that turned it into you being how you is or how you moving you're not taking nothing and so and so that's how it was but now you're older you're wiser even with me you know what i'm saying even he said i squashed me i squashed your beat remember that big one 
Rich Player. Like Rick, my brother Rich Player had Shout beef with Blade, my other my brother. brother. <laughs> with my other brother who was in jail for life. And them guys had no problem letting that thing ring legend. And I jumped in the middle for Rich. I said, now nah, you can't do this. This is my brother. Even though Rich was ready for war. But I was like, no, these are my brothers. I can't do it. I can't allow it. Right? And they became the best of friends. And now, you know, Rich is with me every day. He's my right hand man. He's my brother. But it shows how God used me to squash that beef. And um Right. And and look, look, you know, the whole time he had a he had a he had a uh a plan for me. His plan was for Rich to be by my side. That's a fact. And look at y'all now. You know what I mean? Even even when it came like even when it came to the change situation with Jay Prince, like in fact the old hope would have just minded his business. But you know, we was talking during that whole situation. So you know, like I'm like, you know, a lot of people was upset that I got the chain back. But at the end of the day, like yeah, everybody that's upset, I'm like, hold on, first of all, y'all not y'all not even gonna ride with these little Bronx dudes that's out here. Not to say that I was because I didn't even know them, but I'm just saying like if I got a chance to dead a situation, why not? Like I, that, it was, it was, it was so, it was that simple for me. You know what I mean? To step in and be like, yo, and and, and, and to make it clear, if somebody takes somebody's chain, you ain't getting that back unless some people want to give it back. So ain't nobody acting like somebody took something from. So I didn't take nothing from nobody to give it back. If I, if they didn't want to give it back, I would have never got it. You know what I mean? They, they little thoroughbreds. They not soft. But at the end of the day, I, they respected me enough to be like, you know what? We understand. You know what I mean? That's you know what I mean. That shit could have caused the whole East Coast, but so like, like you said, God put God put us in these positions and these positions of power for a reason. And you know, shout out to my bro Kwame. He's on here, right? He's watching us right now, and I see him. And he always told me. I'm talking about since I was younger, bro. He used to be like, "Hope you the one. Hope with great power come great responsibility." He always told me that. Always. He know. He says. He says. So who much is given, much is required. That's what he always tell me. And, and you know, his words always stick to me. And a little bit recently, I almost lost I almost lost it over a situation, he know. And he had to talk me out of it. And it was easy because... Oh, no, we human. We human. We human. <laughs> we human, you know what I mean? But it was easy because I'm in this frame of mind I'm in now. But, you know, like, we, we got that, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. It's like, it's like we have to do it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even like... I don't even feel like... It's something I had to do. I'm like, I got to go. I was in my home in Atlanta chilling. I live, I got a house. I'm like, I'm good. I, ain't, I wasn't even in the Bronx. But mm -hmm. I'm going to go make this situation better for all of us because this could be ugly. And, and, and in the end, wound up being better. I built a relationship with Jay Prince. Shout out to Jay Prince. Y'all fuck with the mob ties all day. Y'all already know. Like, and, and, you know, it, it built it built a stronger bond. You know what I mean? So people don't look at the positive in that. They rather just like, oh, you should have let your nuts hang and kept the chain hope. For what? I don't want it. I don't need it. It ain't mine. I didn't take it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, people got to elevate. People got to get their mind out the gutter. People got to grow. I was a bum. I had no money. I I stuck up Mr. Softy, bro. I've, I've did the most pettiest shit you could do in the world. And I let my mind grow. I grew wisdom. And now all I try to do is help people give back. I just don't understand grown men my age that still want to think, that are thinking at the same level that they thought of 25 years ago. I don't get it. And if you want to keep doing that as much as I love you, I can't really be around you. Because we are on two different missions. Because you're a grown-ass man, and you're trying to think as petty as we thought when we was kids. We all was petty, right? But you could grow out of that. You can. You know, you and can. sometimes, you know, these people don't want to grow. They didn't get mad at you for growing. Exactly. Like, no, I like this path. I like helping people and changing. And it may lead to some greatness that I was really born for but then they get scared because they say damn this guy's really growing this guy's really trying to move different and they get mad at you but um to everybody out there man you can change that's the moral of this whole conversation here is you can start wild you could be crazy you could do whatever we get it but you need to change
for the betterment, the betterment of our people. Yo, Oak, it's good looking, my brother. Thank you for coming on here with us. And I'll keep in touch, all right? Most definitely, bro. Before I go, I just want to shout out my brother, Free S1. You know, he wasn't as lucky as, you know, like you saying, as everybody else. He blew trial. I beat trial. You know what I mean? That's my younger brother. But I love him to death. Shout out Free S1. Shout out to Jose BX for the L Bronx hat. You already know the Bronx logo. We in here, man. Salute, Team 450. Joe, appreciate you. God bless you, my brother. Nothing but love. All right, bro. Yo, Hocus 4 fifth. There you have it. And you don't know who I know. You don't know who I know. It's simple as that. And we talking real shit from people who really do it. That's what this is about. People who really do it. And so, you know, people used to tell Hocus and other people, Fat Joe ain't a good brother, and then he fighting for his life, and Percy fighting for his life. But he see Fat Joe every week, Fat Joe the rapper coming to see Percy on a visit, Rikers Island, this and that. He said, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe I got this man confused. Maybe I got this man confused. Maybe he is the truth. And so I'm glad to see his mind elevate, see him grow. It's always, this ain't just a show where it's just Fat Joe's frame of mind. We have to bring everybody up here and spread their point of view. Hocus ain't with the vaccine. He's a vegan. Styles P ain't with the vaccine. He's a vegan. I can't tell them what to do. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. If you're locked up fighting for life and no one visits you, remember the guys that visit you. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. Put God first. Believe in good times and bad. I'll see you tomorrow. It's the biggest. Peace.